Hello there, I'm Kaz. Well, 2014 has just begun, a year that's sure to be full of surprises, disappointments, and of course, brand new titles that we can't wait to get our hands on. So, what title is going to set the bar for 2014? What game is going to be the bearer of standards for all future releases to come this year? So, what other games are coming out January? Any game that's not a remake or re-release or... Okay, fine. We'll take a look at Cash and Robo Gimmick Finder or whatever it's called. For those of you who don't know, Chibi Robo is a game that was released on the GameCube on February 6, 2006 and was produced by Shigeru Miyamoto. It didn't sell very well at the time or score highly among critics, but since then has become a cult classic for its unique gameplay and charming little robot doing big things in a little world. Now, let me ask a perfectly legitimate question. Why, of all Nintendo series, did they decide to make another This Is Not Actually Chibi Art Style Robo Game? Couldn't they have given somebody else a turn? Forgetting the other titles that could have been localized on the eShop, I could think of 10 series more deserving of a sequel than this GameCube swan song. Oh wait, I already did. Well, I can think of 10 more series more deserving of a sequel than Chibi Robo. Punch-Out, Starfy, Sin and Punishment, Custom Robo, Wave Race, Adventures of Lolo, Golden Sun, Warrior Land, Advance Wars. I could probably name a few more if I wanted to, but that's not the point. The point is that, for whatever following the original has as a cult classic, there are a ton of other series much more deserving of becoming Nintendo franchises, several of which have proven themselves to either sell more, or have an even larger following. But, lo and behold, there were sequels. There was Chibi Robo Park Patrol on the Nintendo DS, which didn't sell very well and never made it to Europe, another one on the DS called Happy Radio Soji, which never made it out of Japan and didn't sell very well, and a re-release of the GameCube Classic on the Nintendo Wii, which, you guessed it, sold poorly and never made it to North America. So, if you're a Chippy Robo fan who thinks that I'm just hating on some small Nintendo series, well, no, I'm not. I like the premise of the first game. It's just that said premise doesn't evoke what you call franchise material, and history seems to support me, as the series never had much success in terms of sales. Enter Chibi Robo Photo Finder, a game which has recently made headlines for its censorship of cartoon butts. <sighs> Nintendo, I know you like keeping your family-friendly image, but there is a serious problem when a Nickelodeon cartoon is more mature about humor with butts than the people running your company. Seriously, what is it with Nintendo and censoring arses lately? Bite my shiny metal ass! Oh, but I digress. With a smaller size and focus on taking pictures, does this new entry snap something new through the 3DS's lens? Or should this dusty old series be put back on the shelves like so many forgotten family albums? Let's zoom in and find out. <laughs> The story to Chibi Robo takes a minimalistic approach, only giving you the slightest detail of what's going on in the real world. The curator to a museum is looking to fill up his museum with something called nostalgia junk, and it's up to Chibi Robo to help him out. And it's at this first hurdle that Photo Finder just stumbles. Chibi Robo Photo Finder never gives any context for what we're doing. Yes, we're supposed to be gathering this nostalgia junk for the museum, but there doesn't seem to be any reason for it. They never indicate that the museum will shut down, that nostalgia can't be bought somewhere, or that they're preparing this museum's grand unveiling. The curator just wants more stuff to show off because the plot says he wants it. It's the same reason Chibi Robo is given no explanation for why he quite literally drops in. The plot dictates that Chibi Robo must be here rather than Chibi Robo having any desire to be here. The characters never make you care enough to ignore questions the game fails to answer, and you won't care about them because the writing is just terribly amateurish, either making them irritating or incompetent. Considering the last game I reviewed also had a charming little robot doing tasks, it strikes me as odd that the story here is so utterly disposable when that game had clever writing, likable characters, and context for what we were doing these tasks for. Then again, like that one, the premise of the plot, however poorly it's handled, wasn't the main hook. It was the unique bait used with some very special gameplay. As previously mentioned, your goal in Photo Finder is to collect nostalgia junk and fill up the museum's many exhibitions. To do that, you need to take pictures of certain objects and go into the past to grab them and put them on display. The more objects on display, the higher the attendance, which in turn will grant Chibi Robo more upgrades. Now, the idea of taking pictures of something simple and applying them to a certain object or texture could have led to some interesting patterns and encourage creativity in the medium of photography for a younger generation, but nope. You go around shooting pictures of electronics and clothing. They're not even interesting objects to take pictures of either. One of the first ones you can take a picture of is a power outlet. A power outlet. 
Chibiruru, Master of Electronics, T-Shirts, and Toilet Paper. This isn't even a new concept. Konami tried this and failed with Photo Showdown, and that was on the DSi four years ago. Even Nintendo did this with Face Raiders, and that game comes with this system. But hey, if there's nothing wrong with it, then there shouldn't be anything to complain about. Oh, how I wish that was the case here. The camera barely works. Even in a well-lit room, it never registers, even if it is the right object. You have to get over 60% accuracy in order to be able to grab it, but there's never a good indication of whether it's the lighting or the object itself, so you'll end up wasting your film not knowing whether or not you need better lighting or a different object. The 3DS's camera is terrible enough as it is, but couple it with some incredibly picky photos to take, and you have a frustrating focus for one of the worst uses of augmented reality to date. Eventually, I just got fed up and looked up what I needed on my laptop, which seemed to work much better, but would still cause a headache from time to time. When the central focus of your game does not work, that's a serious problem. On top of that, it's not entirely clear what you're supposed to find and take pictures of. Some of them are obvious, like the previously mentioned wall socket, but others don't give any indication of what they're supposed to be, like this circle. Is it supposed to be a ball? A button? A plate? A much better game? Oh, it's a pin. How bored were the developers to make a game where you take pictures of pins? So there's your cycle. You take your picture, take your object, put it in the exhibition machine, and put your junk on display. There's a limited amount of times you can use the film to take pictures with. Once you run out, you need to do tasks and earn happy points to purchase more film. You can either play one of the many media games available in work, or explore five different environments by choosing Explore. It's a nice way to tie the new mechanics in with the old, but there are two major problems with this. Number one. This means the entire design of the game is focused on a gimmick that barely functions, taking away from what could have been some fun minigames and mechanics to flesh out. Number two, these tasks are some of the most tedious, poorly designed part to a game I've ever played. Firstly, there's not a whole lot of variety or originality between them, and they get really old really fast. Sure, there's records to break, but by the time you discover these trophies, you'll never want to play these minigames ever again. Secondly, many of these minigames have poor controls, are luck-based, or are the same as previous ones with slight variations. Thirdly, and correct me if I'm wrong Chibi Robo fans, but doesn't this take away from what made the original Chibi Robo so unique? If I'm not mistaken, the entirety of the original Chibi Robo was one single environment whose world was only separated by loading screens, not several different environments you choose from. Explore is the closest in spirit to the original, but it's also the least interesting. The areas feel almost as small as you do, features a terrible camera, and gives very little reason to explore them beyond killing time between minigames. Oh sure, you can clean up a location and earn a few points, but the next time you visit, it's just as filthy as before. And the points you earn compared to how much time you spend there are minuscule compared to how many you can earn in a single minigame. It renders any incentive of doing them in the first place pointless. The only purpose it serves is to pad out the game's length along with the rest of the busy work here, like not being able to redo a mission after you fail it. Oh, if you thought you could breeze through the story mode, then think again. After you finish all your available work, you have to wait for a certain amount of time to pass before you can do them again. Not that you'll want to come back to them because almost all of them are utterly dreadful. Out of the 14 minigames, the only one that was tolerable, I repeat, TOLERABLE, was Garden Head, a sort of time attack mode where you dig holes into a ground and play whack-a-mole with these things. The rest of them are either gimmicky messes, frustrating guessing games, or ill thought out on a conceptual level. A racing game where you don't actually race? A box crushing game where you have no idea where the box with the bomb is? Even with Garden Hand in its favor, 1 out of 14 is pretty pitiful considering that the highlight of these minigames is merely above average. In addition to the clock ticking down in some of the minigames, there's another time limit you have to watch out for. See, Chibi Robo runs on a battery powered by watts. Every action you do, minigame, exploration, or otherwise, uses up watts some draining it faster than others. The mere act of standing around drains your energy. If your watt count goes down to zero, you go back to the beginning to get charged up. If you are in the middle of doing a task or a mission and you power down, you fail the mission. If you fail the mission, you can't try it again right away. It's like Eminem once said, Sadly, the creators of this game didn't capture and let it slip. The battery becomes less of an issue as you get a more powerful one with a higher charge, but it leads into yet another issue. 
Photo Finder isn't challenging, it's frustrating. Any challenge the game creates is artificial, either due to the time limit associated with every mission and every task, or is based purely on luck. What's more, the difficulty curve for what little challenge there is goes down instead of up throughout the course of the game. Over time, you get a better battery and can do more tasks for a longer time, but the minigames themselves never increase in terms of challenge, nor do the environment expand for more exploration and tasks to do within them. In fact, some of them start taking away things to do like the garden. It ends up being tedious busy work, constantly interrupted by the threat of said work, being read or moot because the game says so with its arbitrary battery life. And speaking of which, the act of charging up your battery itself is a pain. Imagine if you will that you're in the middle of cleaning up an area and your battery's getting low. Before you can go back to charge, you have to empty out all the junk you've collected. To do that, you'll need to find this thing and get it to remove all the garbage you've got from cleaning up the area and go back to the curator's office. You go up to the plug on the wall, but instead of simply clicking A and charging up, you have to pick up your plug by pressing Y and stick it into the wall socket. That is so needlessly banal and backwards, I don't even know where to begin. Why designate an entire button to one action when you could use it for something practical like selecting one of your tools? Why leave that to the bottom screen? Why not use one of the unused buttons for that or let us customize our own control scheme? Why not empty out our trash when we leave instead of going to this garbage disposal unit? Why make us have to pick up the plug and put it into the socket? Can't we just interact with the power outlet and charge Shippy Robo up instead of being lectured about how to use the bloody thing? Haynes design choice after Haynes design choice, Photo Finder finds whole new ways to infuriate while being devoid of anything fresh. Oh, so I have that many points. Say, Tally, I appreciate your help, but I do know how many points I have. You wanna know why? Because the last minigame I did, not 10 seconds ago, told me how many points I have earned, and the bottom screen I'm looking at right now is showing me all the points I have. Do I sound very happy? Do I? You get no points from me, Chibi Robo. No points! Oh, but the tiresome fun doesn't end there, folks. You can't skip cutscenes. Sometimes. You can skip the same intro that's reused for every character, but the repetitive dialogue and actions that are done after have to be watched every time you go through them, and the story cutscenes can't be skipped whatsoever. Oh, and there's no option to fast forward through them. Trust me, I tried. Even the main hook of the game isn't free from this exhaustion. Sometimes, the photos may just become duds and not nostalgia. Duds, which you end up having to explore the world and find them. Did I mention this game was padded like mad? Actually, maddening is exactly what describes Chibi Robo Photo Finder. Clocking in at just under 15 hours, featuring more hours than good ideas, it quickly overstays its welcome. Boredom is quite common when playing Photo Finder, as you're constantly waiting around for something to do instead of looking forward to the next opportunity to play a minigame or a chance to clean up. It was what every game should avoid becoming. Mundane. It's a dreary slog from start to finish that only robs you of time that you could be spending playing much better games on the eShop for the same price or far less. I could go on and on just listing off every single one of the insipid issues with the very design of this drawn out dead, but it wouldn't make a difference with this pathetic pile of electronic pus, so let's just jump straight into the presentation and finish this, shall we? I've heard a lot of people praise the visuals in Photo Finder and how it oozes perfection in every polygon, but complained about the terrible frame rate. Me personally, I didn't notice or mind the frame as much, most likely because I was distracted by how awful the rest of it was. I have no idea what game these people were exposed to that would have them claim it's on the same level as Resident Evil Revelations or the Ouija's Mented Dark Moon, because it sure as heck wasn't this one with its low polygon count, awful environment, and jarring character movements. There are so many objects in this game that are so poorly rendered, they look like they were made in a 3D art class, not a video game released by one of the largest electronic entertainment companies in the world. More often than not, the graphics display an ugly world with far too many jagged edges and backgrounds made up by terrible textures. If they couldn't be bothered making actual textures for half of the objects in the game, couldn't they put at least some effort in making the rest of the game look nice? The curator looks like he belongs in a horror game, he looks terrifying! And I'm not exaggerating, I say that with no hyperbole, that the characters in this game are so poorly rendered and designed, they become more nightmare fuel than charming. The only exception to this is Chibi Robo himself, and even then, he's not some technical marvel, he just looks good. On the sound side of things, the voice quality is inconsistent, some characters sounding crystal clear, while others like the curator sound like they're speaking through a 1930s radio. <laughs> 
Actually, most of the clear voices sound awfully familiar. <laughs> Hmm, I wonder. It doesn't matter. It's all gibberish, and it's not charming in the slightest, with phrases that are repeated over and over again, within the same sentence. This is made all the more awkward with the distracting lip sync. It's as if the creators didn't even attempt to match the voices with the characters' mouths flapping away. What characters that have mouths, that is. Day in the I'm going to hog you. <laughs> not nah, Vigil. The nerd. There are some neat sound effects, like the ones made with every step Chibi Robo takes, but they're nothing that special. It's more impressive than it is actually adding anything to the overall experience. The music is a pleasant surprise, a mix of good original tracks and recycled ones from the original Chibi Robo, though it begs the question of why we wouldn't just play Chibi Robo on the GameCube in the first place if so many of these great tracks were featured in that game and in higher quality than what the 3DS is capable of pumping out even with a good pair of headphones. The catchy beats here make up the shining jewel in this scummy sea of scrap, but overall does not make up for a surprisingly weak presentation. The atrocious visual and audio fidelity displayed here perfectly exemplifies what Chibi Robo Photo Finder is. A complete waste of time by everyone who created and ever cared about this series. As you can clearly tell, I love Chibi Robo Photo Finder! Actually, I don't. This game is just awful. Chibi Robo Photo Finder is a disaster built around a gimmick four years too late. It's Pikmin without any joy, Animal Crossing without the motivation, Face Readers without the novelty. As a piece of electronic entertainment, it fails to deliver any bit of enjoyment or satisfaction and should be avoided at all costs. For $10, there are way better choices to fill up your eShop library than this. So yeah, Chibi Robo Photo Finder is really, really bad. Actually, it's not just that it's bad. It's that it's not even interestingly bad, like, say, Big Rigs. There is no joy to be found from playing this abomination, and I hope to never play it again. I say this with no exaggeration, no hyperbole, just with all my honesty from the bottom of my heart, that this is the worst game I have ever played on the 3DS. By far. Chibi Robo Photo Finder earns a 2 out of 10. 2014, everyone. What a way to start. Until next time, game on, my friends. Do you know what time it is? Time to find your Chrono Trigger poster? Huh? Yes, exactly. Now let's start playing. Huh. Come to think of it, where did that poster go? Oh well, let's go play, Roxy.